Severance. Apple TV's new series that takes the idea of I'm trapped in my nine to five monotonous on the keyboard, on the computer, you know, work job thingy uh, to new extreme sci-fi crazy places. And it is terrifying, hilarious, uh, utterly captivating, incredibly mysterious. And yeah, just uh, enthralling and Far, like, just really, really good. Like, a lot better than I kind of thought it was going to be. Kind of heard about the concept, and I love Adam Scott, so I'm like, I'm going to check this out. Uh, also directed by Ben Stiller, so I was kind of curious to see how his direction, see, like, I don't know, see what he's kind of doing now. I haven't really seen him do it much recently. So I was really, you know, kind of curious by the creative team. Haven't heard of the actual creator of the show before, but uh, really fascinated by the idea. But I also kind of felt like, once it, I was like, I kind of feel like I know how this is going to kind of feel and play out. That being said, this show has this bizarre feeling to it. Like, it's it's almost hard to describe. Like, when you're watching it, there's this kind of odd, kind of offbeat feeling to it. Like, all the characters have this sense about them where there's just something uneasy about it all. The art direction for the office workplaces are really, really, like, beautifully simplistic, stylized in this really kind of basic clean sterile way with just like a little bit of flair and color to make you feel like there's like an environment and a feeling to it but really it's just kind of like tricking you the way that the office place is kind of trying to trick its workers into that same feeling i love that like the computers are these old box early 2000s kind of looking computers gives everything like the keyboards look a bit weird and different we're not dealing with like big mac computers that everyone's got now or anything like that so it gives this odd kind of timeless uh dated kind of feeling where it could kind of be set anywhere so when you step into this world as these uh people do these innies as they call themselves when they're in the workplace who knows what time it is out there one character even says in the second episode oh i actually think that why would we even come in here it must be an apocalypse or something or whatever going on out there and we're all living in the sea or whatever really funny and really surreal like the idea that these people who step into this world like they have no idea what's going on out there, and it's just incredible. I love a sci-fi idea and a high-concept film or TV show idea that kind of takes something that is very kind of, uh, you know, human and something that we all deal with, something that's almost cliche in storytelling in some ways, where it's like, oh, bloody nine to five. Oh, I'm, I'm, I feel trapped. I feel trapped in my work office. Oh, this cubicle, more like a cage. You know, we've, we've seen so many things like that. Whereas this show can essentially say and do all those things, but it takes it to such an extreme level, such a, a, a heightened metaphorical symbolic level with its sci-fi concept of people who split their brains due to some kind of experiment. And so they only remember their, their work life and then their life life. And it's such a bold, huge, big kind of concept and idea that it really is just utterly compelling. It's a spectacular kind of concept but then it's brought beautifully to life at least in these first two episodes by ben stiller i'm not sure if he's directing all of them but the direction was amazing the actors are all spectacular every single cast member is amazing john Turturro plays like everyone's least favorite co-worker who's like way too strict on the rules and all these things but then towards the end of the second episode like there's a little bit of like he sees everything melting in this oily black sludge thing and it's like okay something's up there <laughs> i'm very intrigued and terrified as to what the hell that could possibly be because he kind of seemed like he was maybe going to be the the one guy that's like actually lumen this big company this big evil corporation this clearly evil corporation that we all work for actually they're good but maybe not maybe he's uh his brain's freaking out too but our lead they're all amazing uh but our lead character adam scott is just a powerhouse an amazing performance in both the work life and then the life life adam scott is one of those actors that i think just plays the straight man so well i'd i'd argue that he's maybe my favorite or second favorite like straight man in these absurd kind of comedy kind of roles him and jason bateman they're kind of like my go-to straight men like any kind of thing that they're in where there's absurd crazy ridiculous comedy things happening something absolutely hilarious can happen but then when it cuts to them and they're just kind of straight man reaction to that thing happening is usually what actually makes me laugh not necessarily the absurd comedy 
you know, comedy character on the side doing the wacky thing, you know, it's often them reacting and saying something that actually makes me laugh a lot. Like really, really great uh, acting by Adam Scott in everything I see him in. But in this particularly, I feel like he's beautifully cast as like the, the straight man, as the everyday man, as all these absurd characters that have this really uneasy, unsettling feeling to them. There's, you know, really serious manager boss lady played by the chick who's medium from medium mrs medium let's call her and she's really really great uh you know as the kind of unsmiling kind of boss then her underling is the always smiling kind of uh secretary character to her but both of them super creepy every time they do anything i'm like oh something's off something's off i don't know and it's really really great but Adam Scott's reaction to everything in the work office is really, really great. But then we cut to like his real life and we get this tragic, heartbreaking, depressed, kind of grief struck man. And his acting in that is just, it's so separate. It's so different. He's so broken and he's just done such a good performance. It's so great to see him almost do really two roles because they don't know each other yet. I mean, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that kind of stuff. But the way he kind of plays both roles is really, really great. I really like the depressed Adam Scott character, like in terms of just seeing him kind of flex those acting muscles that I feel like I haven't really seen him flex that much. And we get this one little line hinting to the fact that his wife died, uh, presumably in some kind of tragic uh, way, and he's just broken over that. And we kind of find out that that's why he's come into this whole severance thing, because he wants to block out eight hours from his day, and he wants to, you know, forget that his wife has died, which is so brutal and sad and tragic. And then you start kind of thinking, like, okay, so that's why he's in there. Why are all these other characters in there? Like, what has happened to them in their lives? So I'm really fascinated and curious to kind of see what's kind of brought them all into this, uh, which is really kind of fascinating and intriguing to see if you can kind of piece things together from the characters that we see in the work life. Like, why would you choose to black out half your day? What about those work friends? What about just knowing that part of your life? So it's such a scary and fascinating concept. Cause like, maybe like at first you're like, oh, actually that'd be good. I hate that monotonous doing the same thing every single day. Every Monday's the same. Every week's the same. Every month's the same. And then you blah, 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 blah. But then when you really start getting into it and this show starts getting into that, it's a terrifying, horrific concept. There's a fun dinner party scene where he brings it up to Adam Scott's family, friends, or whoever the hell these weird people are. Uh, they're all having dinner without eating dinner, and they're all just drinking water. Worst dinner party ever. Hated that. Terrified me. I don't know what kind of horrific world they're living in, or if they're just new age weirdos, or whatever the hell's going on there. But yeah, that really, that upset me almost more than the, the concept of this show, which is utterly terrifying. And in this dinner party, one of the characters is like, oh, it's totally unethical, it's this, it's that, and he's throwing out all these words, and I'm Scott's just like, man, I'm standing right here. Like, uh, yeah, I, I did it, but I have my reasons. And, you know... So, I mean, it's a really kind of interesting concept alone and we kind of deal with that whole nine to five, I'm trapped in my workplace, oh, work as hell and all those kind of things. But then the real mystery starts to kind of play into it where we get uh, the his old best friend at work has been fired and he gets his new job and all this surreal stuff where we're introduced to a new character, all this classic kind of setup for a show. But then we get all these really interesting, bizarre situations of like, okay, his old friend that's now in the real world reaching out he has all these like dream flashes where it's almost like there's two of him, one in the suit and one in the shower in that last bit of the second episode. And he's just freaking out. I'm like, okay, is his brain splintering or is there going to be like two of him? Or I don't know what's going on because they're clearly hiding something at the workplace. Like obviously if they have to wipe everyone's memories, they're doing something sus. And I love the fact that it's not just kind of classic code looking stuff that you see in movies or something where it's just scrolling, you know, little letters and everything. And you're kind of like, oh yeah, that looks kind of, realistic in a way. I mean, realistic for code and hacking and computers in TV has been nonsense forever. Uh, so, I mean, they can do everything. But in this, it's so specifically stylized and ridiculous. Like they're getting their big old school box computers and there's just numbers like floating on the screen in this weird kind of pattern. And then they're just like, you've just got to like feel it. You know, don't think about it. Just feel it. It's like, it's the, it's the chick from Tenet talking about the whole world of Tenet and Christopher Nolan's Tenet. And he's like, don't even think about this. It's don't even think about the concept. Just feel it. Embrace the concept. And the chick's on the computer. And then suddenly she's like, oh my God, the numbers are scary. And she gets it all and chucks it into a box and they're decoding code or filing code or whatever the hell they're doing. And it's so mysterious and completely surreal and over the top that it's like, 
really quite terrifying and it's so vague. I loved that. I found it just so kind of fascinating and I'm so curious as to where this is going to go. Like, what the hell are they actually doing? How many people are actually in this building? I have a feeling, it's, it seems like there's like thousands of them in the building. I have a feeling there's going to be very few of them in the building and what they're doing is completely insane and horrific and intense and I cannot wait for it. I love a mystery. I love a mystery that genuinely mystifies me and makes me super curious. Like as it's happening, I'm just like, I can't even begin to piece together what this might be. I love that there's this big jigsaw of this show, like this jigsaw puzzle of this show. And we have a couple of pieces, maybe one corner, but we, I can't even tell you what this puzzle looks like at this point. And I loved that. Like sometimes a mystery starts playing out and you're like, Oh, I kind of feel like it can go only two ways and 50, 50, you can still be shocked, surprised, maybe turn off a bit of your brain and like, just let it play out. But this one, I'm like, what is happening? I can see what they're saying about work culture, corporate culture, all these kind of things, big, big, big corporates being like, they're evil, they're evil. They're doing nefarious things and you know, the secret things and you know, contracts and all that kind of stuff. But what is actually happening in the show when you get past like the themes and ideas they're like, playing with, I'm really, really fascinated about. I'm really hoping it kind of really deep dives into that kind of thriller mystery aspect of it. Uh, all the acting is amazing. All the characters are really, really interesting and fascinating. I love where everything's been set up so far. It's honestly such a surprisingly great show. Everything is so good about it. I'm actually so invested at this point. Last thing I want to touch on is the opening credits. We get them at the start of the second episode and Wow, oh, wow, oh, wow. Just so cool. So odd and surreal the way the animation. Like at first I'm like, oh, whoa, he looks weird. Oh my God, it's all animation and weird. And the oh, just the art direction and the feeling of it and the way it's just kind of like, it is so like kind of like you can see where they've gone. It was like, oh, he's this and he's got a thing in the thing. Just so cool, so inventive, so fun, so stylized. I just loved it. It was so cool to watch and it just gets you right in the mood for this kind of really offbeat comedy thriller horror maybe like maybe not horror but it's it's a terrifying idea and it's a terrifying kind of world we live in like we don't really know too much about the world is anything really different is it just these damaged characters in this world it reminds me of a lot of different sci-fis for some reason kind of the feeling and mood of it where it's like a bit off but still worldy and very symbolic and metaphorical reminded me of the film the lobster the sci-fi elements remind me of that TV show Devs. I don't know. Give me all these kind of different vibes. But yeah, really love it. Love the art direction, the direction, the acting in particular is incredible. Everyone is on fire. And yeah, I just, I just cannot wait for more. Thanks for watching guys. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell and comment below. What do you guys think of the first couple of episodes of Severance? Are you sticking around to watch the rest of the series? Are you kind of like, oh, it's a bit weird. But yeah, I'd just love to hear what you guys think. Yeah, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.